What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a two-door freezer that has a major restriction right at the top where it enters the unit. I was here yesterday and back at it this morning, 6 a.m., hopefully to get it done before a lot of people come walking through here. I left it off all night, so what I'm going to do is, before I cut it apart, I'm going to restart it so I can show you guys what's going on so you can get a glimpse of the frost formation. So if you ever come across something like this, you kind of have an idea of where to look and what to do. So yesterday when I started working on the unit, I didn't expect to find what I found this morning. It was working okay. It was struggling to pull down below zero. It was running around between zero and five degrees, but it was slowly going down. And that's crazy because I've never seen something like that happen when I have just barely 75 PSI or 65 PSI of liquid line pressure feeding the expansion valve. So it's funny because yesterday I didn't even get any videos. This is the only picture I have yesterday from this from this call right here is this one. And that's the picture of the expansion valve. This is the ice pattern that I had on the expansion valve when I first opened it up. Like I said, it was running like five degrees. I'm just, I'm guessing, but the ice cream was still frozen. I knew by looking at this that my screen wasn't clogged because this isn't the kind of ice pattern you get when your screen's clogged. You'll get ice starting to form actually like right about here and it'll kind of be a frost pattern more like this. But I was a little confused, so I, I screwed up. I, I changed the liquid line solenoid valve and I changed the valve coil first. As a matter of fact, you can still see my old parts sitting up there on top of the cases. So I want you guys to see for testing purposes for the video. So here we are, and I'm gonna open the valve, watch. Have y'all ever open. seen something like that before? I'm not gonna lie, that was a first for me. So yeah, I was pretty surprised. I, I, I had to double check it. Like that just couldn't be right. So I try again. And sure enough, pressure is building up behind my valve. But very little. Close it down for a few minutes and let the pressure build up back there all the way up to the restriction. It was icing up all the way up the back wall here, but there was no ice up here. No ice up here. The ice would start to form right there. So I've got a restriction right there. Yeah, and it's really cold right there. I don't think, I don't think the camera can spot it, but it's cold right there. So we're going to take this pipe apart and check it out. See my liquid line temperature. But see, yesterday it was running at least about 50, 50, 50, 60 psi on the liquid side. Now it's like hardly that. It's barely pushing anything through there. Here's a glimpse. Yesterday I had literally like about an eighth of an inch of ice frost around the pipe, and it was a lot easier to see. right there the restriction all right so that's what I wanted y'all to see it's proof so I'll close back off and cut it out all right so I'm gonna give that a minute to pump down see pumping down and we'll go find some sandpaper while that while that clears out all right so I got both valves out there closed I'm just gonna do that and let it, uh, let it all bleed out. All right, so I'm gonna cut it back a little ways, and that way I can pull the whole thing out and see if I can find and clear the blockage. There's not much in there, just a little bit of residual pressure. So here's the spot. I think it's all happening right here though, so, but let's clean it up, open it up, unsweat it, and see what's going on. I always like to wear 
gloves whenever I'm sanding copper or messing with copper torches, any of that stuff, because it keeps my hands clean and pretty. You know, when it comes to using a wet rag, it doesn't have to be like clean wet. It can be a dirty wet rag too, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna take it loose at the, uh, at the half inch elbow. I'm gonna heat the elbow up. So I'm gonna open it some more. It feels a little heavy on this side. Maybe it's because of the solder, I don't know, but I wanna open it some more. That sure is a hell of a lot of solder for somebody to put on there. If they put that much solder and it got sucked into the pipe, then well, that could definitely cause a, a big restriction. So I wanna investigate that a little more. Because some people don't know how to install. see it look so I'm gonna shine this into the sunlight so that sun shines into the coupling this way or the elbow this way and we're gonna look at it down here with the camera it's in there whatever it is probably a glob of solder it's in there clear as day It's a, it's a plug of some sort. I think like a copper plug. Look at that. That is terrible. There's my restriction. Now, the restriction's gone. I'm gonna see how much solder I can get off of this, uh, off these fittings.
one drop. Two drops. Three drops. Four drops. Four drops. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Twenty two extra drops of solder. I could take the rest of the day off with the scrap money's worth of solder that I found on here. Spare solder. Damn. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix this little little kink right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna round it back out a little bit with this this year. A little better and go over it with a little bit of a coating of solder goes a little something like like that
See, that's all the amount of solder you need for all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight joints. That's it. Since I was working on the liquid line, and the liquid line is, you know, on this side of the coil, I can open suction valve back up, pressurize, I can pressurize up the suction with my clean refrigerant from the circuit, and then purge through here any contaminants that got inside this part of the tube, because this part of the tube is closest to this right here, and that's a quick way if, if, you're, in a, if you're in a jam. Okay, now we're ready to crank it on. That's a lot better, I think, I believe. Like to say, yep. It's feeding good now. Let that coil get nice and cold before I turn these fans on. Pretty cold, huh? This is my temperature. 
coming out of the supply, suction line temperature, liquid line temperature. Alright, well I'm wrapping it up on this one. It's good. <clears throat> I think we're good.